My leg is so wet from dog. <laughs> my brother's dog dunked her face in the in the uh, in the water bowl and then bashed it right into my leg. Okay, right. hold on. Go. Ahead. I've never had a dog that did that. And then our latest addition, who be with us for two years now, Reese. Like when he drinks, it just flows out of his mouth. That sounds familiar. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Macy. Like, what, uh, we have I've only, a, I've only had labs yeah. and they've never done that. Oh <laughs> uh, well, I, we have a we have a Rottweiler that's on a diet right now. But um, people come into our office and and they say, "You have a dog?" And I say, "Yeah, we got a, like something about Mary dog." <laughs> and they say, oh, "I'm good with that." And <laughs> and the then, looks on their face, <laughs> and then Psycho comes out <laughs> when she runs out. Uh, is is hysterical. Yeah, she's we, we get people all the time. She's, she's about 110 pounds. Okay. Do you do you adjust her name when they're like, "Oh, this is your dog. What's her name?" You're like, <laughs> "No, meat eater." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's my that's my dad's favorite story of every time we've ever been to a dude ranch or been on a trail ride, especially if my boys are around. the The wranglers would always be like, "All right, pick your horse," and the kid would pick the horse. They're like, "Jesus, you pick killer!" Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Actually, he had a. I guess he was a business, not partner, but like business associate associate that he had a dog named killer yeah <laughs> and that dog was a fucking psycho yeah but it no it was it was nothing like you know i was eight years old so yeah, every, every yeah, dog everything was a psycho. Big yeah it was also 140 degrees when we were there it was in yeah, california it was warm I, it was well, actually woodland hills i heard had 121 last week it was the highest That's recorded, where was. highest recorded temperature out there no, thank, no you. thank you. Didn't Death Valley just record like 135 or something okay. wild like that? There? Something, some crazy high number. Yeah. Um, okay, so do you want to do <clears throat> news first or should we do that at the end and possibly save it? Or I, I, I say we do it early, get it out of the way. Okay. <clears throat> we have, it, it'll I, barely I already... be a week old by the time because this will go up next next week. So Right, right, okay um let me just i just want to pull one thing real quick uh, what, uh, so it, it death valley hit 129.9 at that point why not just round so the hottest it's ever been out there is 134 that's about how hot it gets in my brother's side by side <laughs> every race car <laughs> yeah also what was every race car did you uh, did you tell your dad about what Texas Dave said? Which part? They Everything he said was quotable. They don't call it summer. They call it second winter because it's so hot that nobody goes outside. So just like winter where everyone stays indoors, they have second winter and stay indoors for summertime too. He's outside Austin. The guy we had uh, last uh, week. Yeah. Well, we listen to Paul and Elson every morning on the way in. So, And she's down in your area. Who? Paul and Elson. Weather? Um, outlaw. Oh, an outlaw. Oh, and she yeah. complains about the weather nonstop. Yeah, she's down in Austin. Oh, no. Chris is, well, Chris is in Kansas, Kansas City. City. KC. The land of barbecue and, uh, yep. and, and Which, nice. spiralized storms. Uh, <laughs> spiralized, yeah. It was a really nice looking. Yeah. I'm, I was trying to see if there's anything interesting to talk about this, but I, okay. So I, I added something about the Yamaha side by side Yeah, and I can just use that kind of as a talking point to transition. Perfect. So let's do it. Also, wait, before we record, is it better if I hold it here, if I hold the mic or is that? Weirdly, no. when you hold the mic, it makes it like a thump underneath. Like I can hear There's an odd sound okay. underneath. Stand by. Eventually, there will be an upgrade. But Tons now, of mic noise right now. There is not. <laughs> the interesting thing about yeah, Zoom. Yeah, that's me tapping the microphone. Right, right. The interesting thing about Zoom is it does a good job of filtering the sound. If we were back on Skype, <laughs> I'd hear my echo on your mic. Skype was terrible. I'm going to have to build a tripod. Is that good? um yeah cool all right let's do it so you actually, we start you the actually show. sound at my volume right now cool so chris says the intro i say hi i'm my name and then we say today we're joined by and then you say 
okay, who you are. And right. sometimes people don't know that we're talking to them and kind of stare off into the distance and go, oh, uh, fuck, I'm such and such. Well, because so. you even explain that different than we do it. Well, <laughs> it's never the same. But I say, hi, I'm Chris. He says, hi, I'm Ross. And then you get to say, hi, I'm Rich. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> That'll work. <laughs> Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I am Rich. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off-road, even rally. We spent a lot of time on rally cars with Texas Dave. That was actually a lot of fun. Whole episode. Uh, but tonight, it's not full-size, but kind of full-size, possible. What are side-by-sides? Mm-hmm. Side-by-sides, not- well, side-by-sides used to be relatively small, and now they are the enormous. The size of Civics? I mean, shit, my brother's Can-Am is probably 75 percent if not 80 percent as big as my car can yeah. and what is yeah. it a maverick he has yeah. man no it's is it a maverick or it's commander? a maverick it's a maverick is maverick yeah i thought it was a commander no i think it's a maverick well, see how it's much maverick I sport attention. i think <laughs> okay so it's a maverick so yeah side by sides are enormous i, I it, might be googling dimensions right now just for the fun of it oh it, it, holy crap seriously yeah, yeah, seriously. And it weighs what, 16, 1,700 pounds probably? Uh, this this the, says dry yeah. weight's 1,390. That's so right. dry weight, and then he added, he's got gas. Gas a plus. Spare tire that weighs about 1,000 pounds. <laughs> and <laughs> he has and 30s. A shovel mounted oh. to his roll bar after 10 beers one night. <laughs> so <laughs> the Mounting only ball. number <laughs> that he's bigger <laughs> than your Miata is the height. By double? Yeah. It's by it's uh, about. it's close. Yeah, you're 49 inches tall. He's at 71. Jesus Probably Christ. higher because he's running 30 inch tires. He's on 30. Okay, so he's on 30s, and he, doesn't he have like a lift on it? I don't, I don't think he's got a lift. No, no. it's Wait, your your man is only eight inches wider, and he's on stanced wheels. So so he, he probably he, is the same width as probably. Your Miata. And it's the same color scheme too. It's a white Can-Am with a black <laughs> roof and black mirrors. It's, it's basically so the same great. thing. Honestly, he, would, he might out-accelerate me in <laughs> zero to 60. <laughs> Just stomp on the gas. I, th- I, read, I read a Razor review last week, and I think zero to 50 was in 4.5 <laughs> seconds. That's nuts. That's, that's the vehicle that I have, which right now is in my factory, up on jacks because I for about four days. Yeah, I, I made a decision to sell my 12 inch wheels that were OEM wheels and go up to 14 inch wheels, and didn't know that I could sell my wheels a lot quicker than I can buy new wheels and tires these days. <laughs> because supposedly everybody, because of this pandemic, is buying Shipping. TVs, <laughs> and if you go onto anybody's website and Google tire size, it says out of stock. Oh no. So you can yeah. get wheels, but you can't get good. So I have tires. I have four wheels. I just don't have any tires. <laughs> I just figured you wouldn't. You'd be waiting on all of it, like just. No, the no, wheels I got. The wheels are sitting the wheels in the. I actually shop. bought tires. Bought tires. I bought yeah. tires. Believe it or not, I bought an asymmetrical tread pattern. Huh? What? Yep. I didn't know that. Yep. So. I bought a GBC Canadi. It's a Terra Master. Okay. It's an asymmetrical tread pattern so that you can mount your tires based on the terrain that you ride. So that what? Yeah, it's a, it's, a thing? it's crazy. It is so a thing. If so, like, listen, I, rock, I only bought it because rocks, I couldn't buy anything else. Okay. <laughs> rock, wait, rocks so, are. Wait, they ran these in Baja. So the. They okay. ran these in Baja. So, so G- GBC used, like, I don't know, eight years ago, GBC was a pretty small manufacturer mm-hmm. that I, I think manufactured tires for other companies. And now GBC is probably top three or four biggest companies for, for, for UTV. UTV tires. Yeah. Yeah. So does it mean like if you have the left sides mounted on the left, then that's good for rocks. But if you take the left sides to the right side, then you're good for sand? No, you have to have all four mounted the same way. It's just that if, if you change the terrain that you're riding on, you have to break the wheels down and... Oh, and the flip tires. it on the wheel? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So they're semi-directional. Right. That's crazy. Right. <laughs> that That's is so complicated. Crazy. Yeah. Ah. Right. <laughs> but if you Google GVC Kanadi Terra Master, it's... You know, I mean, I spent a lot of time on the, on the internet in the last two <laughs> weeks because I was desperate for tires. 
and I finally found four tires out in California that I bought. You know what's crazy? The, the overlap here is that a lot of people are starting to just run like Jeep tires on their side-by-sides. Right, but really? they have to have 15 inch, the, but I would have had to uh, gone to 15 inch rims. For a, for a uh, Jeep? Yeah, there's a company out there called Forsum. That's what a lot of the Polaris okay. guys are running. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure there tires. If you Google that, though, careful. Like, yeah, Forsum. Forsum. Yeah. It's Force and then U-M. Force yeah, um. one word. Oh, one word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ross heard yeah. foursome like golf. We're going to yeah. go I'm with pretty golf. sure that yeah. it's a golf you foursome. You can't tell me that they want to go A little, a little uh, interesting side note. I was reading the uh, – we have the U.S. Open here in um in westchester do you know that the guy from caddyshack that guy danny noonan yeah is caddying for one of the pros really? <laughs> what yeah well you remember the, he's um, actually a friend he, he grew up in westchester he caddied at wingfoot in his teens and he's friendly with one of the pros so cool. I don't, yeah and I he's mean, caddying for him in the like the early rounds not not like you know once he gets really well, going, but. you remember the caddy shack, the Jeep caddy shack, the caddy shack commercial from this. Was that was that Super Bowl? You would know. You're in Kansas City. You watched the Super Bowl um, from Groundhog when, Day. Yeah, the ground. Oh no, it was Groundhog Day. Jesus Christ! I just have Bill Murray on my mind. Yeah, mm-hmm. the Gladiator and the yeah. Groundhog. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes. I was Anyways. I was trying to look up the caddy shack caddy thing. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I got Murray on my head. We were also talking yeah, about like, zombie actually, today. and he has he's actually wearing <laughs> the original hat from the movie oh with a country club logo on with it with a he's even got a bushwood cc yeah bushwood, bushwood <laughs> hat yeah yep that's funny yep it is pretty funny i i michael o'keefe is that michael o'keefe name? yep that's pretty that's funny. it that's the guy yeah i don't think i've seen that movie since i watched it as a child he was yeah. nominated yeah. for an oscar <laughs> uh, what other movies were there were there, were there uh, any other movies that year did they make a, another movie well, they made Caddyshack too, but it was not nearly as good. <clears throat> no. Let's see, Michael. I didn't know they made a second one. That's scary. Yeah. yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Dude, he's still working. Uh, oh, man. extra. Yeah, I left, I, I left the newspaper upstairs. For you. That's funny. He's, I didn't even know they were doing that. Either. Tons of stuff. He's just one of those guys. Um, uh, like he started in '74. Um all kinds of tv he was in episodes of mash um, i've never seen a single minute of mash mm, i don't cool think you, i don't think you watched did you watch that i did watch it i've oh, seen good. the entire all of it i've seen the movie all the way through no it's so good actually it's been on my list of shows to watch and then as other stuff comes out it just keeps getting notched down so it, it helped that my dad <laughs> was a big fan and so when i was in college i think that it started to come out on DVD and dad just bought mm-hmm. every season of it on DVD and I'd be stuck for a home on winter break for a month. And I would just like, I'd sit there and watch episodes of master. It's, it. it's great. Yeah. We used to do that with like MX. It's, like <laughs> it's like 13 seasons. I think. Is it really? Oh, yeah. It was one of the most, it was one of the longest to, running shows for a long time. Dedicate yeah. my life to yeah. actually work. That through. and, I think the final episode was like one of the most viewed things of all time for a long time. What show was it probably like 10 years ago that you were talking about was the most viewed finale? Um, Dallas. Dallas. Dallas would have been one too, yeah. Because they had that reboot and it was what the last two seasons? Yeah, it was bad. Yeah. Yep. Um, speaking of reboots, and this is a deliberate, <laughs> deliberate segue. It's a solid segue. It's a good segue. So Hummer, you know, Hummer is bringing the GM is bringing the Hummer nameplate back. There, it's an EV, an electric pickup. It has a million torque. I think. What did they say? I think they um, and torque. I thought it was eleven thousand. Eleven thousand pound feet of torque is what they're saying. The Hummer pickup is going to have. So. A couple of days, excuse me, that's a beer burp. Um, a couple of days ago, they released a video of it crab walking. So all four wheels can pivot independently. So you can basically like park somewhere and then turn both the front and the back and wobble. And Chris has mastered screen sharing. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> four wheel steer. 
I can think of multiple points on the trail where that would not be a no, detriment. I'm not a fan. Why? I don't know. I'm just not a fan. I'm just I'm too old fashioned. Too much he's, complexity. He's looking at something that can break. Well, well trust me. Yeah. I've broken a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there, but yeah. So so the, that was the big hopper. So the 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 interesting part about that is it it kind of brought I was listening to Smoking Tire earlier while I was doing a bunch of work and Matt Farah's show. Matt Farah and my dad have quite a bit of uh, childhood and school overlap. With, but he went to our country day. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. all the all the lower Westchester stuff. Right. So. So it's it's your neighbor. And he went to Penn and and my dad went to Swarthmore, which like or what right next to each other half hour hour which it's all philly right it's all philly yeah so so he was saying they're they're talking about because everything's basically becoming drive by wire like why hasn't someone called full born full board joystick okay what do you need the steering wheel for and all that other like just give it the joystick like like fancy yachts have the joystick already like why are we not just boats. you know anything about boats no nothing no. Other than I, <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah I think you, the have joystick... to, you have to break 10 minutes before you get to your destination no. that wouldn't bear well i did every sandbar and every rock and everything else <laughs> and so no break. that's what reverse key. is for <laughs> yeah. yeah reverse is breaks um, i don't know i think that's going to be a really cool gimmick that nobody's going to use yeah. like how when was the last time you saw a quadra steer uh you know or yeah or you remember that you remember when uh oh god so we we have a family friend who used to work for general motors and was a, a higher up for hummer and other companies and, and don't forget we used to get when the new cars came out new trucks we used to get them for a yeah. couple days and among them were hummers <clears throat> but i remember when they were Hucking the quadra steer thing. Do you remember that? It was a yeah. there was Denali version of the Yukon XL and the Sierra Denali where the yeah, they, back tires would pivot and like yeah. never see those things anymore. It was a great functional idea, but so for, like, I don't know. It makes me think like we don't see it so much in the truck world anymore, but <clears> in <throat> sports car and hypercar world, isn't four wheel steer like in Lambos oh, yeah. and Porsches like that? Yeah. That's New a modern system. system. Four wheel steer because they claim, quote unquote, it shortens the wheelbase. So if you were stuck, like there's a, a support beam next to it. If you got stuck against that beam, you could theoretically, with this Hummer system, use the joystick to pivot the back wheels to crawl the back end around it and then like, walk the vehicle away from it. I don't know. I like the system my brother employs much better, which is Lurch. Lurch Lurch's yeah. brother. <laughs> Uh, just he, pick up the back end and move it <laughs> yeah that <laughs> no my brother's actually gotten really good with the uh because the side by side so his can so wide he's really good at approaching an op like a tree or something and hitting the back tire onto that tree to bounce it around bounce it off <laughs> yeah <laughs> and he's it's really violent it like is. you've seen him do it. yeah we just zip tied his plastics together um, i'm sure that had nothing to do with it <clears throat> Hey, guy, I found it on Porsche. God, the ass of that car is enormous. It's Dude, not huge. Good. That looks like my wife. <laughs> <coughs> that's Andy. That's Ross's, that's Ross's mom. Yeah, that's my mom. Way. He's talking about <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's one of those Welcome comments my where uh, I'm going to probably hold my tongue a little bit. Uh, <laughs> like, I, know, I don't I, know what I'm getting into there. That's what I tell her also every night. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm either going to hang myself or uh, pretend nothing was said. So that's the Hummer news. Uh, what else can we discuss? Um, he owned a Bronco, so we can talk about Bronco. He was very excited to see Bronco. Right? The, the, the picture of it flying was the best. So the Broncos they released, I sent you all the pictures. Mm-hmm. There's the base one. There's the base one with more shit on it. There's the right. one above it. There's the one I above still, it with more shit I'm on it. I'm still dying to see one on the road. You're, it's going to be a year it's be a long time. That. But, but I'll tell you my Bronco story. I went to college. I had a Trans Am. I grew up in Westchester. That's the picture um, they showed. Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah. I grew up in Westchester, went to a uh, prep school in New York, and um, 
There was no off road. I mean, you know, when when, you're, still when you're growing up in Westchester, it's <clears throat> when you're 16 or 17, it's what kind of car are you going to buy? You know, yeah. what kind of car do you have? <laughs> it still is. Um, and usually the guys with the hotter cars got the hotter girls, you know? So, I mean, that was, you know, what it was about back then. Um, so the movies are accurate. So, yeah, <laughs> so I had a train right. jam, which I absolutely loved. Um, Oh shit! Is and that, no, there's not a picture of it over there. No, I actually have it upstairs. I have my original um, key tag with a picture of it. Framed. It was a good Trans Am. It was, it was a, a '77. It's still to this day. It's still a great looking car. It is. But anyhow, my two roommates between the two of them, and I hope they're not listening. But between the two of them, they were probably close to 700 pounds. They were they were football players, and they couldn't fit in the Trans Am, and they complained for years and years and years. And I said, all right, you know what, guys. We're going into a senior year. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy like a truck or a Bronco. And back then there there weren't very you know very many trucks out there. Um, well, they know, were they were trucks. They were trucks. You either had to be like a contractor or a farmer or a farmer. And and you were neither. I was definitely <laughs> neither of those. Um, I traded my Trans Am for Bronco and, and immediately realized when I when they took the license plates off the Trans Am that I had made a mistake. But that being said, I had no AC, I had no carpeting, uh, but my the roommates Bronco? were, mm -hmm. yeah, my, I had, you know, the one with the candy stripes, the black one with the candy stripes down oh, the yeah. slide and the like white, the white and wagon and wheels. Was this well, 78? I'm going to say it was 78, 79, yeah, yeah. In, that era, in that era. Um, cause I, I got out of college in 80 and I had it for a year. Um, and it was actually, you know, I went to, I went to a prep school in the city and my life was school and sports. And the, the other kids in my school had their apartments and their this and their that. And I had a house in the Poconos that my family owned. And back then it was, it was nothing like it was today up there. It was really, really rural. Like the Poconos today for reference have become glitzy and reasonably wealthy in yeah. spots. And I mean, he always tells stories about how I-84 out there wasn't even paved. Right. So we would take the dirt bikes out and it was item four and we would ride forever. We would just, we would ride down the state roads and we would just go on there and ride forever. Um, but the, um, the Bronco I had was kind of horrible but the um, <laughs> the choices at the time were the k5 blazer which was okay. equally as bad and probably just about the same vehicle but built on the jeep line. which you know jeeps were kind of popular for plowing and things like that but the cherokees unless you got up to the country where i was cherokee like chief. cherokee chiefs were 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 pretty pretty good is this more stripes than you had it's, that's more stripes yeah that's definitely like a class up from what I had. That's way uh, too nice. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, or you could get, you could go to International Harvester and yep. look at the scouts. One of our guests recently has a scout. And I went up in the, uh, up in the Poconos, but oh, you had to go to an International Harvester dealer. And yeah. I'm going in and there are tractor trailers and there are tractors and all kinds of stuff and i walk in i walk inside the place and they have two little scouts and like you know in the in the showroom i just wasn't that comfortable you know buying that so anyhow i had that's yeah. a good looking scout yeah Holy shit yeah, yeah if you can, about if you can cool. find a good one now like they're ridiculously expensive yeah they're so i climb in quick yeah i had my bronco and hold um, on can you tell how you used to collect firewood in the Bronco. Well, that's a fairly irresponsible story, but um, <laughs> I'm pretty we sure it. we're out of the statute of limitations on this. It was all my own property, so I wasn't driving on any <laughs> on any roads. But I would. You're not incriminating anybody. And you know what? It's... The the friend of mine who used to meet me up there, who was one of my roommates from college, is a trauma surgeon, and I used to tell him, "Come on, let's get in the truck, get some firewood." And inevitably, we would wind up running into the woods with the bump with you know I had a big brush guard and trying to knock down trees. <laughs> and there was no alcohol involved whatsoever. Absolutely. And then no, that's just no alcohol. I that's just the next, male prerogative of like, I have something big. I'm going to push over something small. Would, or just like her. We'd wake up in the morning and look at the truck and I'd say, the fuck did we do last night? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it follows the mo of fishing with m80s but um yeah yeah it's very much uh, that. <laughs> we don't need any stinking fishing rods we've got <laughs> m80s uh, says the guy who got in the boat that couldn't swim yeah but anyhow what jackets uh, are for? uh we you know i had the bronco about a about a year and um year and a half maybe and and, and that was it I got, I got rid of it and then um you know, it was kind of on to the next phase of, um, of my life. But so as, as far as the off-roading, you know, I think like my, my love of the woods and stuff came from the time that I spent up in the Poconos because that was my escape. So that was the next segue, you know? <laughs> so got it. New that's Bronco, how we got to the Poconos. That's how we got to the Poconos. But right. he's more, in, and we'll return to this, but he also had a Wrangler for like 15 right. years. That's probably the vehicle that's responsible for why I'm doing everything I do in <laughs> life. And right. so what happened was we, you know, I, I had kids and, and we moved up. Well, I had Ross and, and, and we moved up north, well, kind of quote unquote north. North. And I, north. north and I said, you city. know, I, I think I need a north. I think I need. Oh, no, you guys glitched. Oh, you guys glitched hard. <laughs> uh, can you still hear us i can't now still functional yeah you know how Good. i normally do Good. the speed up thing yeah you guys you did the speed up thing nice nice this is still a, a work in progress so anyhow um i figured i needed a car for the snow and um my wife was working for uh, an insurance company in the city and she had a great credit union and next thing she knew i had bought a a Jeep on her credit. <laughs> oh, do oh, you really? No. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. She came uh, home. She says, oh what the God. hell is this deduction for my check? I was like, oh, I didn't deduction that. even. Oh no. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Oops. Oh, I didn't know that. And the pattern actually continues as, yeah. as I get older. Well, now the quad, the quad makes sense now. When I when I bought the first quad, I oh. I actually told them that you know I told her that it was like our new snowplow. <laughs> <laughs> it so, did technically plow snow. Yeah. It also did a lot of work. once. Did it do it Funny once? How, no, um, it, did, it did enough to bend the frame. Okay, um, and break the winch cable. What What year was the Wrangler? It was an '89 Wrangler. I bought it for thirteen thousand um, dollars. Air conditioning the, and any seat other than the, the driver's seat, seat was an option. Right. What? And it was it was the most impersonal car delivery other than my truck, which I bought during the pandemic. Uh, okay. Um, because I went in and they had about 30 of these things in a, um, in their garage and he couldn't figure out which one was mine. And it wasn't, and we there was no back and for remote to right. unlock it. Right. <laughs> I had no keyless. It took us about an hour to figure out which, you know, which vehicle was mine. Was that before like Vintags? Oh yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, this, that thing was. Does this was, look pretty similar to its stock? No. No. Uh, no. So it I had was. A hard top. You had a hard top. Yeah, had a hard, hard top. top. It was. It was red with a gray hard top, and uh, no rust because he got rid of it before it could rust and kept right. it inside. Right. So, so you know, I I don't. Um, <clears throat> I think I think I found it still. <laughs> I don't remember um, how I got into it, but I got involved with uh, the Jeep Jamborees. Um, Which were terrible, as you've told me a hundred times. The first one was great, but I, I, I like close, closer, yeah, closer. closer. <laughs> they actually panicked and put thirty-one inch tires. I bought <clears throat> thirty-one inch tires and tried to fit it in my. I found a picture. Slack it. Try to fit it underneath. I'll um, send it to you. <clears throat> <laughs> just like, just but I, uh, we did a few cheap jamborees, and um, thing that really struck me was that was the capability of these vehicles like from stock. I mean, there were people who literally had the window sticker still on their windows who came up and did these things. No knowledge of off-roading. Uh, they just said, you know what? I'm going to try to do this and I'm going to go up and have some drinks and have some meals. And now people we'll do it with side-by-sides. Right. Right. So that was like the, uh, the whole precursor. And just to like backing up a little bit, I had also bought a, um, a, Jeep pickup from an uncle who had lived upstate. There we go. There's the Jeep. Yep. So the, 
the pickup was that be an MJ? Was it a the pickup? Was a fifty-seven Willie's pickup? Oh wow! For all twenty minutes, and I had it. I actually had it for about a year. Um, I th- oh wow! I thought I it was it way a, shorter than that. No, I I actually had it for a long time. Mm. What color uh, was it? It was like matte gray. Matte gray. Like yeah, army it was gray? like army like gray, like not a, like a dull finish. And it had wooden boards running along the sides on the bed. It had the the spare tire mounted on the side of the truck. Oh, that's awesome. Um, that would that would be a seventy five thousand dollar truck and bring a trailer. Yep, that was it. So this, oh. here's the tire mount. <laughs> that's it. Exactly. The problem was that the guy that I bought it from had parked it inside his garage that's the shop, but I did not realized that the garage had a dirt floor oh shit so the whole underside had rusted and i remember driving down 87 with my dad and i think the gas tank fell out <laughs> on the way down. <laughs> yeah he was i was, thrilled. I was, <laughs> he was expecting uh, i could feel the breeze from the floor but no the gas no, tank just falls off no. the funny thing was that we had taken our hunting rifles with us and i really thought he was going to get out and take one of the rifles and shoot me in the head <laughs> but um but anyhow so um, frustrating we actually fixed we actually fixed it up but you know you got to remember this was before the internet so finding parts for these things was virtually impossible um and then I had it parked in my apartment building where I, where I lived and I had it broken into and they uh, ripped out the ignition uh, and they cut that. the seats. And that was the end. That was the end. I, at that point I said, you know what? I, you know, mm-hmm. I can't so, find parts. I just got to get rid of it. I, I, I didn't know I, you had it that long. Yeah. I had it for huh. a while. That, and I'm that, telling you the looks on people's faces when I drove that thing through like neighborhoods was. Okay. So imagine like driving like, a rickety old pickup through like Beverly Hills. That's not, well, too, yeah, not Beverly Hills, but like, like fancy wealthy. I've, I've been to Greenwich. I know what's up. You've been to Greenwich. So, you know, <laughs> exactly. If you drove the Land Cruiser through Greenwich. Oh, oh you there'd froze. be some side eye. This is inevitable. It, I screenshot it every time and he's going to come back and it's going to oh, speed freeze? through all of his. Uh, um, Am I back yet? Uh, Am I back yet? Yes, I'm you're back. back. You I'm said back. you said I've been to Greenwich, and I've been to Greenwich. I've seen. I, I definitely know that the Land Cruiser would get some side eye. Yes. So it the uh, so the the Jeep um, the Wrangler was um, was fun, but it also <clears throat> taught me that um, if you go off road enough, you're going to break stuff, yep. and inevitably we broke stuff, and um, it we got we got stuck places and a then, lot of time down, and then I, we actually wound up trailering it. Which was I didn't have the right which, vehicle to which trailer. The story is towing what was probably a two thousand pound trailer with probably a four thousand pound Jeep with a ninety eight Yukon mm. with no oil cooler, no trans cooler, no diesel, uh, and no diesel. So you, it was a Yukon. Uh, yeah. yeah, blue ninety eight Yukon with barn doors, yeah. and it was towing probably six ish thousand pounds through the hills of New York. So the Wrangler. Are not pretty. <laughs> oh, no, they're not. So we, 98's late enough that like the photography should be better, but like it's also pre HD everything. Yeah. Oh yeah. Six pixels. Yeah. So I, um, I abandoned the Wrangler. I actually traded it. I bartered it <clears throat> with the guy who was putting my pool deck in. So um, he took it and. He kept it for a while. Yeah. That's that about, it. that's. Yeah, exactly. Close. And incidentally, yeah. I just remember the uh, I just remember the mm. temperature gauge going up the hills at, to the point where I was like, "Oh, geez, we're gonna." I, I had a '98 Sierra, but it only had the V6, so I get it. Yeah, I didn't even know they had a V6, but uh, the the, uh, the light bar. It wasn't even a brush guard; it was literally just a light bar yeah. that he had on his Yukon. I eventually put on the Avalanche that I inherited had inherited did from him. I've so, seen I've seen this thing. Right. Yeah, and it was still on 20 years later. <clears throat> so, uh, um, yeah, so the Wrangler went, and then um, and then after the Wrangler, <laughs> I kind of missed being out in the woods, and uh, I had a couple of friends who were doing quads and stuff, and I was like, okay, how the, can I... The guy who serviced the Wrangler at the end of its life right. was in the quad quads. world. Okay. So I was like, okay, how can I kind of justify this and 
get it in the house without getting thrown out of the house. <laughs> so I brought it in with a snowplow. And, um, and then... Um, what was the first one? It was a Kawasaki 650, uh, straight axle 650. Brute force. Um, when the brute force was basically a prairie. It was not a... With it was different not fuel injected or anything. Um, and we had that. And then the kids had the quads. Um, and, we, and we had those for, for um, a while. Um, and I, and actually, um, the kids went kind of through their, their teenage years with, you know, with these, and it, it was, was like two to three weekends a month. We would run up, um, <clears throat> right. That, but yeah. red, yep. that, but red, yep. that, uh, but red was the first one. And then like bend the frame a little in the back so that it kind of crab walks. <laughs> um, I remember my, my first crash in the woods with this one guy. Um, I went over a hill and went right into a tree and broke the front right tire right off the... That's it. That's it. That's it. And I remember putting it... I remember getting towed out of the woods and I remember putting it back on my trailer like it was a trophy. And I was hoping that everybody I passed on the road coming home was looking at it saying, <laughs> wow, that guy really rode. Not knowing that, <laughs> well, that guy's a horrible rider. Yeah. Um, but that was an experience. That, yeah. like, that was like his sec first or second time in the woods, and it was uh, it was a crash. Right, and then um, you know Is the you uh, snowplow looking. Yeah, yeah, well, it was it was all black, but it was pretty close. Thereabouts. Um, so anyhow, um, we kind of evolved, and and um, my my younger son went from quad to quad to quad. Ross had one. Um, that I had, had one for a while. For, I had, I had mine for almost 13 years now is that because your brother broke his a lot no he, he just took got better bigger. care or no, he, he just was, wanted to upgrade no we, no, we made he was a, we really made a, young we made a fantastic decision to take him in the middle of the woods in the middle of god knows where nine years old yeah <laughs> i think he was... i have a nine-year-old i don't know that i'm making that same decision <laughs> well the pictures of him and and the only instructions were Stay between us. Don't, you know. Yeah, because I would lead and my brother would be between us and my dad would be in the back. But he, so was, he like, was nine. How old were you? I was 50. I couldn't drive. The, okay. I was 14. Yeah. It, well, well, let's that's, a, that's a pretty sizable jump for uh, yeah. rational thinking. Yes. And my brother was probably, he's always been really tall and really skinny. And he was probably like 75 pounds, 80 pounds Maybe. when At he nine? started. That's about right. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I'm, um, I'm in my mind. I'm comparing him to my son. To your own. Well, let's put it this way. Right now, he's twenty. He'll be twenty-five in December, and he's probably six two or six three and a hundred. He's got to be. He's getting one fifty-five, one sixty, maybe. He's one seventy-five. I weigh more than him. No, he's <laughs> shit. He's getting. He's, getting, he's bulking up. Dude, I haven't he's seen out. those numbers and so the progression years. of <laughs> yeah. Uh, well. So the progression of his quads was because he, he aged grew. out of what he was riding. He yeah. would be sitting on a quad and it would be like comically, like it was like you put like an adult on a small child's ATV. Right. right. And he's our comic relief. I mean, he would go into the woods and, and have to poop and would run out and say, I got to poop. Still does. <coughs> and... Is he down here? Can he? No, no. He's and he here. would, <laughs> and he would grab onto a tree, and as he was pooping, the tree would collapse. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yeah. searching images for that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. So, um, but anyhow, you know, we we did the whole like uh, Massachusetts State Park thing, and then um, and then I I actually got into the side by sides uh, really because of. Um, like inability to ride anymore. My, I had really bad arthritis in my elbows and my wrists and we would go on rides when I still had the quads and I, I'd get out and I just didn't think I could, you know, keep up with the kids. And so, so ATVs have come a really long way since his brute force, you know, they went from straight axle and carbureted and nothing in the way of amenities other than like a digital dash to electric power steering with multiple modes independent suspension with like i mean my quad has remote reservoir shocks and you know it's crazy and it's just the way that the atv world has evolved has been very fast but the side-by-sides have also 
jumped to match that. So his first was a Razor 800, 800. Razor, non, non power steering. And it was just, it, you really had to be a good driver to exactly. drive it. It was a 2011 orange, was it orange crush? It was, orange, yeah, it was, I think orange crush is the name of a Jeep color. I don't know. I can't remember if his name of the player's color, but it was, it was a stock really. 50 inch orange crush razor. <clears throat> No, no, not even close. No. That that's what? that's a CF Moto, I think. No, that that's a first. That's like an 08. It said a 2011 on it. No, it was it was orange and it was narrow and the tires tucked perfectly under the fenders and it was tiny and it looked like you could take like two people and just knock it over. But I got to tell you, you cannot believe where we took these things, what we did with them, and we were able to get them home. Like Jeep trails, like deep, hard obstacle Jeep. I trails. remember coming home one night. And parking the um, that's it, that's what yeah, it looks like. It. So I remember coming <laughs> not, home one not night. Not the white seats though. No, okay. that was a like that was another model of the year. But anyhow, I remember coming home one night. We had gone through like some swampy stuff and coming home and was that came, when I got sick? That was another time. Oh. But we came home and this creature crawled out from underneath oh, the yeah. quad. I wasn't there for this. Thank we had to go, at, <laughs> go after it with a hammer. It was like. <laughs> it was like a little prehistoric monster that had Salamander. traveled with us. No, no, no. This thing was. They, I don't they know what claimed it was. it was a plate sized spider when I heard about it first. Ooh. <laughs> so, but anyhow. In um, Florida, I'd think gator, but. Yeah, I mean, it could be countless things here. Yeah. Um, but, you know, anyhow, uh, we, we kind of progressed from there. And, um, and the new ones are just, I mean, they're, they're you know, they're really unbelievable. I mean, <clears throat> you feel kind of like a, kind of like a, a wimp, you know, driving these things. I mean, we'll go up north and do 150 miles a day. If I had done it on a quad, I wouldn't be able to go to the bathroom. But I still do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it no, but the evolution. Oh, uh, <laughs> what is yours now? Is it a 900 now? No, I have, a, I have a uh, 2016 um, thousand, uh, Razor S1000. Mm -hmm. um, it's 100, 100 horsepower, which in today's world is really nothing. Because that, the new ones are all 180 to 220. That, that new Yamaha claims to be most horsepower. It'll probably be north of 200. Yeah. Is it still a two-seater? It's a two-seater. Two-seater, yep. 999 cc's. So under the liter yep. bike limit, but... They've come so far. Like his, if you, if you're sitting on dry pavement and yeah, that, I mean, his is black, but it identical. Yep. Um, if you're sitting on dry pavement in two wheel drive and you, I'm to eat. If I can skip out for sorry, we're, we're on East time. We're on East time here. So, oh, yeah, so we could, uh, I mean, we could probably wrap this up in five if you want. Uh, I'll be down with some. Tell you. Okay. Um, for reference, the 800 razor, if you floored it, you'd kind of like lean back in your seat. But the 1,000 is if you're at a standstill and you are on pavement and you kind of do like, that's exactly it, um, identical. And if you do like hold the brake with your left and then do a little bit of a brake stand and floor it, the front end squats like a drag car. Like really? it, it's terrifying the first time i did it i had to like pull over and stop like it's it's scary it's because there's so much suspension travel so if the front so if you if you brake stand it basically and it drops the front end when you then lift does it then rise everything back oh my god it like the body rolls insane like if it was a car it would be it would it would not pass the moose test it, um it, yeah yeah <laughs> it makes me think of um oh you have frozen and it's such a good one <laughs> My back yet, my back yet, my back yet. Waiting for you to catch up in real time. I'm back. Because you're back, so I'm assuming I'm you're back. back. You're back. You're you're back in your life. Um, who is uh, uh, Lee? It's Lee King, right? Yes, the is, safaris. Well, not the safaris. Um, I think, isn't he the like race driver for Proving Ground? Yes. 
My uh, Google skills are failing me tonight. Hold on, stand by, go and retrieve beer. Be right back. Well, I will continue talking to the audience. I'm listening. I'm, I'm listening. But Lee Keen on Proving Grounds uh, had, God, what was it? Um, it was a side by side of some kind. Uh, let's, we'll take some shots here with some name brands of side by side companies. That's not it. Oh. oh, it is. It is well, what I was... wanted. Ooh, you're both back at the exact same time. Nice. Um, <laughs> he went upstairs and got beer and I went to the downstairs refrigerator and got beer. <laughs> no, it, you made me think talking about like suspension flow of Lee King ripping this thing around the proving ground track and how much body roll he was getting out of it. <laughs> There's a TV show on NBC sports called mm. proving grounds and they test unnecessary thing. Those are all fake beer. Unnecessary things, <laughs> unnecessary situations. Well, we've seen, and we, we ride with a group that we've been riding with since we were part of this group in Massachusetts. And some of the guys are way ex back in the day. Yeah. Some of the guys are ex-racers and I'm telling you, um, it's just amazing to see how fast these guys go. When, when we're, when we're up, up North and we have a group of 12 or 15 uh, machines, the group is probably spread out over a mile. Um, wow. And the only way that you know where everybody is is the dust trail. Okay. So we'll come up. It's not because, dusty. Okay. I, I'm kind of like admitting that I'm at, at the back, but um, the back's great. Dude, there's nothing love, wrong with being at the back. I the love rides. being at the I'm back. I'm the caboose. <laughs> <laughs> Tail end, Charlie. Um, but you know what? I get to see the scenery. Uh, yeah. but, but and you don't you know, have to prove anything. It, it also guys, means that you are the voice of reason when you pull up on someone who's done something dumb. Right. But you know what? I like to enjoy myself and I like to see the scenery. And I'm telling you, we have seen stuff in some of these rides that nobody will see. I mean, it is just yeah. unbelievable what you can see being out, um, you know, being out on some of these rides. There are some OHV only trail systems and trails that give you access to the most amazing, like that doesn't even begin to show it. Like See, this is, this is what I imagine when I think of trail riding in New York is just constantly uh, well, in the woods. A lot of that, that's, that's what a lot of it is, but we still, I mean, not me, I haven't done much in the last like two or three years, but my dad and my brother at least have gone up to like New Hampshire and Maine and some of this, like, imagine like, you know, we've done Moosehead Lake and all that, all the territory around there. And we've done the coast of Maine and, you know, uh, what was the name of that crazy mountain we did in New Hampshire? We did a, a mountain in New Hampshire that was like, we climbed like, I mean, 3000 feet sounds like nothing, but we climbed 3000 yeah. feet and you get to the top and you can see forever. Like the world is out there in front of you. And the only other way to get there is if you hike 20 miles, you know? Yeah. And it's like, there's, there's the trucks and the Jeeps offer their own world of what you can see. Um, one time when I had the white forerunner, his <laughs> view was of the sky and the, uh, the side window. <laughs> anyway, I, you're so, gonna hit the trait you're gonna hit the trait after after all of his years with the jeep and off-roading the jeep i fought the jeep i enticed him to come off-roading with me and my forerunner yeah and the first trail we ran i was in a group that was everybody else said you know 30 40 years of experience and and uh and vehicles with ten thousand dollars more worth of modifications than mine and with no sway bars, we went down this first trail at one of the places, incidentally, that we also go on the quads and are going next weekend, I think. I think we're going next weekend. Yeah. Uh, that's the that's truck. Yep. And we went down this trail and the truck just leaned over on the bump stops and he was holding on to the, <laughs> onto the oh shit handle, just like, ha, huh, this is why I don't like this anymore. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot more weight to fall at that <clears throat> point. It's a lot of weight. Yeah, the trucks are the trucks are more weight and a lot slower. So that's one of my talking points, and probably the last one before we have to go eat dinner because it is a up at five forty-five. 
tips yes. and reasons for getting into ATV. I remember the, oh, don't, no. Yeah, that's the same place. Uh, <laughs> that's the trail that we're prohibited. That, they won't let us on that trail. That trail that that picture's on is the coolest trail in the world. Um, and I, by that, I mean the coolest trail at that place. Um, but I remember when you got into quads, the thing you told me, because I was 13 years old and adamant at like nothing in the world could talk me out of it, but I wanted a Jeep so I could go off riding the Jeep. And you kept saying, it's a lot more expensive and a lot more difficult to put a Jeep on the trailer and drive it home when it's broken. Right. That makes sense. Right. And it's a lot, a lot tougher to get it out of the woods. That too. Yeah, that also makes sense. Now, didn't you tell a story, Ross, on here about things falling off trailers? Was that which time? I was say I, I felt like it was pre-pandemic, but I can't. When the ramps fell out, <laughs> either the ramps fell out or somebody drove onto a trailer and just like missed the trailer and was like hung up between the truck and the trailer. Oh, no, that was that was me on the quad. That was earlier this year. I don't. I know thought it was. That. <laughs> the, uh, that was Ross with the uh, ramps not tied down between the trailer and the back yeah, of my pickup. That's what it was. I knew there was something there that, <laughs> that we all. That was only like six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that just how my brain us, works. Like, you know, the, the the ass end of his quad was like hanging oh. off the back of my truck, not quite on the trailer. Our system is and that his quad like, goes in the bed and the two side by sides go on. <laughs> my brother and I were looking at him, and he says. Can you guys maybe help me? <laughs> no. You didn't go exactly as planned. So uh, Polaris has a, a brilliant system uh, where it's really only two-wheel drive until it senses slip, and then it's four-wheel drive, even right. when you're in four-wheel drive. So it sensed <clears throat> slip and sent power to the front wheels, and he had this – incidentally, the gray Yukon – not gray, the blue Yukon we were talking about before – he had like a WeatherTech floor liner from that in the bed of his truck and the front wheels grabbed it and kicked it backwards and in doing so defeated any forward progress and just dropped the thing between the truck and the trailer and beached it. So I'm an engineer and I make parts for nuclear plants and power plants and I'm trying to figure out how to utilize the winch on the trailer to pick the back end of the quad up and these two guys come over from another trailer who between the two of them probably graduated fourth or fifth grade <laughs> and said, Maybe. why don't we just lift it up? <laughs> <laughs> and I took a picture of Ross with the two of them and I send it to yep. him every once in a while. <laughs> Is this the same trip right here? That, that's, no, that's a different, a different trip. trip. That's uh, that's like, guys, I want to go home. Let's, and Ross is like, no, let's go play in the mud for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> that was Pennsylvania. Just, just adding yeah. weight to the quad. Wait, wait, you know what? It actually happened recently. We were up at our, the club that we, we belong to, and I said, I want to go. And Spen and I went and went through this mud pit, and Ross decided to go through another mud pit and got stuck. <laughs> And it seemed easy. we were up the hill and I hear from the bottom of the hill, a little help, please. <laughs> <laughs> I tried everything. I we, could. Were spending, uh, we were like, should we just leave them? <laughs> yes. I mean, I wouldn't have blamed you, honestly. Yeah. They, they had a deadline. They wanted to get back. The mud pit they went through was very easy with that kind of weight and power. And uh, the one that I tried to go through, I thought was going to be easier. But and you know what? It's it all about the stories and the memories <clears throat> and having fun. That's all it is. Yep. When it comes down to it. Yeah, it, it makes me think of the story gets retold all the time of um, the local group that I go with for uh, lack of a better phrase, trail rides. They constantly will not let me forget about the time that I got stuck when it wasn't my fault. Uh, but, but it's never anybody. It was ne so... I'm I'm out here. <laughs> this this nice gentleman was driving. We were all coming out this exit point, but he didn't see it. What the fuck is on the back of that Jeep? Uh, if he opens it out, it creates a hammock. Uh, hmm. Interesting. Uh, hmm. And he also had a spare gas can and a high lift jack with stock bumpers, but hmm. we won't get into that. Um, 
but he 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 kind of cut me off and put me into the soft stuff and I, I felt just the truck sit down even though i was yeah. running at like 35 miles an hour what's that like <laughs> not not <laughs> fun with <laughs> two boys in the back of the car and i myself did not have a winch but i was running around with three other people four other people on that trip out of five vehicles four of them had winches i i was the only one who didn't so this gentleman was nice enough to go up the hill turn around and come winch me at him uh that's the thing about off-roading like yeah as bad of a situation as you put yourself in there will always be somebody to save your ass in it absolutely also it was his fault I was stuck. Like, as much well, as there's someone there to help save you, like, it's his fault. Like, I was there. Like, I shouldn't. Oh, yeah. And to preface how I got stuck last weekend or two weekends ago, my brother pointed to the mud pit and said, you go first. So I went first. Say, Rich, this is my nine-year-old <clears throat> who I won't put on a quad because this is his reaction as we were coming across <laughs> the stream <laughs> like there the fact go. that he's arm pumping already yep there's a reason i won't put him on a quad yeah and also this this is the same kid too but of course images are taking forever he didn't spend when he was uh when he was that age <laughs> this is it yeah he's our like unless you physically say no he'll try to get away with it so you gotta put a shot collar on him <laughs> with with two weeks of remote school down now yeah i'm in like yeah let's shock yeah. him i'm not surprised <laughs> all right all right so time for us to wrap up yep um happy birthday thank you for joining happy birthday it's great like, to be 30 i was saying what well, i was gonna be nice and like 47 <laughs> like <laughs> no. yeah. I'm I'm not a dyslexic special, so I'm you know I'm 62, so it's tough for me to remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm even past 26. Yeah. So 66 is the next big one. <laughs> Spends almost 26. Where I can, where I can remember you know what yeah. what age I am. <laughs> 62 right. is still young. It's, it is. It's like yeah. the new 50. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> young enough to crash into a tree in the woods. Yeah. Right. And exactly. on that note. Sweet. Thanks, Rich. Cool. Thanks for coming on. Okay. You can- Thanks for having me. Bye.